Reese, Reese, this is CES coverage. We're not filming wildlife. This isn't Nat Geo, okay? Get back, focus on me, zoom out, come on. Hey friends, uh, now that Reese is done filming the zebra, it's time to go over what uh, AMD actually put on display for their CPUs at their CES keynote. We've had a bit more time to digest the information. There was some in-depth interviews with Lisa Sue afterwards, so we have a whole heck of a lot more information to actually talk about what it is that she held up when she showed case the Zen 2 CPU that went head to head with the 9900K in that Cinebench test, and I think that we have a lot more reason to be excited here than we did with Radeon 7. So let's go ahead and jump into that. And just wanna let you know, guys know that yes, we are doing remote coverage of CES from here in Pretoria, South Africa. If you guys want to support UFD Tech directly, you can do so over at our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash UFD Tech. Link for that will be in the video description. And with that being said, let's go ahead and work over the rumors that were happening before CES, everything that we were kind of expecting, the hopes, the disappointments, all of that. So the Adore TV leak that came out about a month before CES was what got the hype train juices all flowing and showcased that we might be expecting AMD to actually unveil a 16 core 32 thread AM4 chip right there on stage and potentially 12 cores, eight cores, and uh, a six core below that in the Ryzen 3, 5, 7, and 9 lineups. And that being at in incredibly amazing prices. But what we got instead were no unveiling of clock speed, only mentions of an eight core 16 thread, which we already have, and then no release date, nothing besides just a die shot that was great like in a game demo that showcased how Radeon 7 was performing more than the Zen 2 stuff. So that was ultimately underwhelming, but the only people we have to blame is basically ourselves. We are the ones who built up this hype train to expect that AMD would come out swinging to knock Intel off of their pedestal with just fierce gloves moments after Intel unveiled that they had nothing else besides Coffee Lake refresh. We were expecting AMD to just reign like Muhammad Ali in his prime, but instead what we got was like them being like, yeah, uh, we're still getting ready for the fight, you know? We'll, we'll, we'll get there. We just, we gotta, we gotta get our roids in first. We just gotta get our like pre-workout in, man. Like we'll, we'll, we'll be able to do it later. So eight cores, 16 threads, not that impressive. The fact that it did go head to head with a 9900K for significantly less power and actually beat the Intel chip actually indicates that it does seem like the Zen 2 IPC improvements will be something that will be nice. Are they getting closer to us? Okay, you just keep an eye on them while I'm talking. So that wasn't impressive, but what was impressive was when Lisa Su showed us the die shot and the fact that there was room there for another chiplet containing a of more cores. You could see that the chiplet that was in the top right hand corner is what actually contains the eight cores and 16 threads. I'm not, let's just, let's back up. We're not, it, it looks friendly, but holy crap, I'm not dealing with that today. <laughs> let's just move on over here, Reese. They're, they don't look angry. They look like they're just trying to eat, yeah. but uh, I, I don't want to die. How close is this dude going to get? Yeah, no, hey, keep, keep the camera on it. It's for the vlog, bro. Do it for the vine. He, he's like legit just checking us out. Yeah. It is a painted horse. You know, it's actually ray traced. Yeah. That's, that's what the white stripes are. Not a band, ray tracing. Looks like he found a good spot to eat, so. Our CES coverage interrupted by a zebra looking to graze. Anyways, you're not getting this anywhere, are you? No, huh? Hardware in box, where's your koala, huh? Where's your kangaroo? Show me, show me some marsupials, at least. Jeez. If you're gonna live in an exotic land like Australia, at least show us the wildlife. So the top right hand corner of that Zen 2 die showed us a chiplet, which Lisa Sue confirmed contained eight cores and 16 threads. And that big beefy thing on the left hand side was the IO die, which is based on 14 nanometers. I did say that in our initial coverage of this, that the IO die doesn't need to exist if they're not doing multiple chiplets. I was wrong on that. It can exist without multiple chiplets because certain parts of a CPU don't need to be shrunk down to seven nanometers it doesn't really give you any benefit. In fact, it just increases failure rates. So they're keeping specific things at 14 nanometers in the IO die, like the memory controller and the PCI Express interface communication. That's gonna be in the IO die to hopefully offset failure rates, but it is true that they didn't need to do it that way. They could do it as one giant monolithic die, but it's probably going to increase the cost of the CPU because they would have more die failures, a higher percentage of chips that don't work that have to be binned down. That dude 
got closer. So I was incorrect in our initial statement, but that IO die does allow for multiple chiplets of the CPUs to be used in a way that we can get more than 16 cores. And there was an interview that actually took place right after, and I'm gonna go ahead and read some of Lisa Sue's responses to it so that we can actually work through what we should be anticipating from the new Ryzen 3000 series because it does seem like what AMD put against the Intel 9900K was a Ryzen 5 CPU based on all of the things that we're hearing. So Ryzen 5 versus a 9900K, if pricing stays similar to where it is now, then that's gonna be a heck of a lot of fun and AMD is going to mop the floor with Intel because they're going toe to toe with a $550 CPU from big old blue. Okay, so just gonna read off of this interview to let you know what went down. A reporter asked, so can you give us any indication where third gen Ryzen is going to be at? And Lisa Sue said, if you look at the re evolution of Ryzen, we've always had an advantage in core count. And so in this particular case, we wanted to show a sort of head to head comparison. Eight cores, 16 threads. Some people may have noticed on the package that uh, there's there's some extra room there. So there is some extra room on that package and I think you might expect that we will have more than eight cores. I didn't say how many. And two memory channels will be enough, asked the reporter. Lisa Sue responded, as I said, more to come. So there we go. Lisa Sue indicating that we definitely will be getting more than eight cores, or not definitely, we should be expecting that. Her tease that she didn't say how many could indicate that the highest that they might wanna go is a Ryzen 7 with 12 cores and 24 threads, which would still be enough. If they're competing with Ryzen 5 having eight cores and 16 threads, which should cost in the neighborhood of two to $300 against a $550 chip, then AMD seems to be the top of the line gaming GP CPU that you might be able to buy in the near future. There is hope that AMD will release a Ryzen 9, which will have two of those eight core chiplets on there to give us 16 cores and 32 threads. And I mean, Lisa Sue has indicated that there is room for it. So if they can get a fully functioning eight core 16 thread chiplet on the top right, then having it on the bottom right as well would give us that price there. And for those of you who might be asking, wouldn't this kind of, you know, offset their Threadripper lineup a bit? Like the 2950X that we have in our office, that technically would then be obsolete. Yes and no, it still is going to hold its place in the professional market. I mean, originally when Threadripper came out, they had the 1800X, which also had eight cores and 16 threads, when the 1800X had eight cores and 16 threads. They still released it because you get quad channel memory support, and then you also get 64 PCI Express lanes when you're trying to add in production cards, sound cards, streaming cards, anything that you use for a professional workload. Having those 64 PCI Express lanes is going to do a world of good in a way that a normal AM4 desktop platform couldn't possibly do. So that is there's still reason for AMD to have a Threadripper that has 16 cores and 32 threads, and they wouldn't necessarily be stepping on the toes of that product by releasing a similar one on the consumer desktop platform. So we can only extrapolate from there if an eight core 16 thread Ryzen 5 beat an i9-9900K, a Ryzen 7 with 12 cores and 24 threads is gonna be on the order of 25 to 33% better, and then the Ryzen 9 with 16 cores and 32 threads could be up to 50% better or even doubly so in many instances. And it looks like AMD has finally gotten the IPC improvements that they needed to actually make it worthwhile to compete with AMD, Intel in video games in single core performance, single core, single thread. Obviously we'll have to wait till benchmarks come out for that. I'm stepping on rocks here uh, to verify that information, but it does seem promising based on the demo that AMD held. And then one of the things I forgot to mention with that chiplet design is that if there's an eight core 16 thread chiplet on the CPU side, they could very easily stick a Vega graphics card in there or Vega graphics chiplet in there so that we could see an eight core 16 thread APU in a way that uh, you know Intel will have a hard time keeping up with until their Gen 11 graphics come out which have one teraflop of performance. A Vega APU with eight cores and 16 threads could be a like a cheap content creator's dream where you can stream and game on the same system. Eight cores, 16 threads, it's gonna be beautiful. And another little fun fact that AMD had during the keynote was Lisa Sue said that the new 
chipsets are going to support PCI Express 4.0. Zen 2 CPUs are going to uh, support PCI Express 4.0. It was then confirmed later on at their booth that other chipsets are going to be able to support PCI Express 4.0 through a BIOS update from specific motherboard vendors if they so choose to do it. So it could mean that your X470 or your X370 might actually be able to have PCI Express 4.0 if it uses one of these new Ryzen 3000 CPUs. Just wait and see to see what kind of motherboard uh, vendors are get actually going to update to support this. It could be similar to you know Intel's motherboard vendors updating to support the 9900K on things like B360, where it doesn't effectively work out all too well, but PCI Express 4.0 coming to a whole heck of a lot of AIM4 motherboards, not just the new rumored X570 and B550 boards that we're anticipating is going to come out, which good on AMD for supporting the technology backwardsly in the way that uh, we've come to expect from them. They like open standards and giving it to as many people as possible. And for those of you who are asking what would be the benefit of PCI Express 4.0, especially when 3.0 can even be saturated by normal graphics cards, the advantages are coming in the fact that you only need a by 8 slot to get the same performance as a by 16 slot on PCI Express 3.0 so that you can actually take a graphics card, having run it on by by eight and get more PCI Express lanes for things like capture cards or NVMe cards, especially with the fact that NVMe is typically bottlenecked by PCI Express 3.0 by four. Having PCI Express 4.0 by four being twice as fast could mean that we actually get faster storage in the coming days and things like Intel Optane, if it ever gets supported on AMD boards, would actually see a performance increase. Compared to the rumors that came out before, it seems like everything we were expecting, AMD just wasn't ready to announce for whatever reason but it's clear that they have the technology that they, we were expecting. It seems like we still might be getting a 12 or 16 core Ryzen, and if it comes in at the same price as the CPUs that we currently have, we're gonna be getting a lot better performance for the same amount of money. So it seems like it's not a never broken leak. It seems like a, just like not yet, we'll see it coming in the future. There are some rumors that AMD might be doing a staggered release where we'll see Ryzen 3 and Ryzen 5 released before Computex, for previous boards like X470 and B450. And then at Computex, we'll see something like the Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9's release with the new X570 products to get the Halo products there. But then the things that are going to be more of the mainstream sellers will be the ones that come out uh, sometime before Computex, which I think is a reasonable strategy, get, giving the mainstream what they want. You're not replacing anything that you have effectively, you just get a, a better price on what they have out on the market already, not really pissing off any consumers that just recently picked up Ryzen 2000. It, it, could, it could work out in their favor to stagger it that way. Obviously, that's just me conjecturing. We'll have to see if that actually happens as the year goes on. But Lisa Sue, very confident that they're gonna be launching by the middle of 2019, which obviously ties up into the Computex timeframe quite nicely, sometime in the May, June, July, or even August is a pushing uh, the middle of the year. So it's not a never, it's just a not yet. So we'll wait for that, but it does look like Intel's time at the top of the podium, based on what AMD has shown off and what we can expect from them in the near future, might be short-lived in 2019, at least the latter half, might be uh, something that they have to suck in their gut for. So with all of that being said, let me know what you think of the Ryzen 3000 CPUs. Let me know what you think of AMD CES announcements down in the comments down below. I'm personally excited for it. I do wish that they would have been announced uh, a couple days ago, but having to wait for them isn't such a big deal because I'm already happy with the 2950X that we have in our office. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed our CES remote coverage, our endangered threats by uh, zebras. Not endangered, we were endangered. Anyways, yeah, hit the like button, get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. Support us on Patreon if you wanna do so. Uh, give us money directly, that way we can uh, keep the channel going and uh, maybe get to see us next year live. Anyways, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too. Hi, zebra. Bye, zebra.